This is Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast, a podcast about, you guessed it, nonprofit fundraising. This isn't the first podcast about it, but definitely not like any others you've listened to. This is a podcast for fundraisers, by fundraisers. No boring charts or the same stale best practices you've heard for years. No ideas that only work in theory here. No concepts from people who aren't in the same trenches as you are every single day. Each week, you'll get practical strategies and tips to craft messages that engage donors and raise more money. This isn't smoke and mirrors. Everything has been pressure tested in the real world. Plus, you can start using them as soon as the episode ends. Now, here are your hosts, Ryan Thomas and Steve Thomas. Hello. This is Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast, episode 25, quarter of a century before the uh, last amendment to the Constitution, we could still vote. All sorts of ways to commemorate the podcast, 25 episodes. The podcast can now rent a car all, all by itself. Yeah, that's true. Uh, still, still get the, I think, I think it's until 30 you get a, a higher rate. But yeah, it's not pretty. It's still legal. Oh, yeah, 25. Who'd have thought? It's a big deal. Anyway, uh, this week we were talking about why your email didn't raise money. Ah, sort of integrating with the... the yeah, a few weeks episode, ago we yeah. talked uh, why your direct mail didn't raise money. Here's why your email didn't raise money. Uh, there are lots of reasons it should have. We'll get into that. Yeah. I'm your host, Ryan Thomas, uh, Vice President at Onicity. And I'm Steve Thomas, uh, CEO and one of the founding partners of Winicity. Winicity is a uh, marketing agency, fundraising. We deal with nonprofits. We help them connect with donors and engage and make sure that their emails do raise money or appeals raise money and donors actively feel like they're a part of the mission and and part of the work. And we've been in it well over a decade, but our team, we have multiple people on the team who measure their experience in the work in decades and uh, we won't date anybody. We're not going to get into (laughs) that because then you can do the math and (laughs) Uh, some people who keep celebrating their 35th birthday that you might realize that math doesn't work out. <laughs> and we started the podcast because some of those friends uh, were tired of us talking about podcasts <laughs> at non work events and social things. And if you do this work, you know that it doesn't stop. There are no office hours. There's not really a weekend. There aren't holidays because a lot of those holidays you you need to raise money off of and. So it just consumes you, and we had a podcast before having one, and so we bought mics and a camera, and here we are. Yeah. So ready or not, yeah, we're ready or not, and regardless, well, I'm ready. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I brought I actually brought my homework, so uh, I'm more wait. ready than not. Yeah. Um, send us your reviews, five star, four star, three and a half, even below that is fine. Just give us feedback on whatever podcast system, application, platform it is that you're listening or watching. Uh, If you're on YouTube, down around here is like and subscribe. So do that. Let us know you're with us. Uh, Any questions? We really love doing mailbag episodes. Those are probably some of my favorite that we've done. Mm. Send us questions uh, or comments, anything you'd like us to circle back on. Preferably Um, if there are a lot of softballs and easy ones to answer. Yeah, we really love easy ones, Mm -hmm. but we'd also take... (laughs) Harder ones, if we have a little time to think. Um, and, you know, if there's a topic you'd like us to hit on or hit on again, you know, mm-hmm. we did maybe we did a 101 level, but you'd like a 201 level, great. Let us know. Podcast at onicity.com. Uh, or, you know, I guess toss that in the review if you want, and uh, we'll see it and, and okay. act off of that. Yeah. But the first thing we always do is something we've seen in the wild. Mail call, something we've seen. These are examples of fundraising that we come across, uh, marketing that we come across and then talk about. So I actually did my homework. So one of the few times that actually happens, I'm going to give in. myself yeah. the ability to go first. <laughs> I like it. Uh, mine's a, a newsletter from a local organization here in Texas, North Texas, that um, I think there's is quarterly and they work uh, with people experiencing homelessness and hunger in our county. And it's 
it's a self mailing, which means you know part of the newsletter, one of the flaps, is actually what gets uh, sent to me, and then you open it up. But what strikes me and what bugs me is on the front, the cover of the newsletter, which is the only thing you're guaranteed really someone's going to look at, is we have a picture of their building. I actually have two pictures of their building. The headline is, oh, the year we have had, and it talks about how they struggled during COVID times and it was hard. Open it up, and I, you know, I'm not even going to worry about hiding things. So the inside, page two, is the letter from their CEO. Mm -hmm. About 600 words. Finally got a finally got a face in there too. Yeah, got a face and got somebody working with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, page two at the bottom is volunteers. Mm -hmm. Like the bottom third of that panel. Right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottom third of page two is volunteers. And then page three, you have maybe 150 words about a, a person. Um, an update of a graduate, someone who has has left mm -hmm. their program and is in a better space. Then you have talking about their healthy meal program and initiative, and then a infographic chalkboard thing showing how they spend your money. And then events on the back coming up. So you have to you you have to have looked at this on three pages before you get to why the donors care why I've given to them, why I'm on your mailing list. It's a lovely building. I, it is a lovely building, and they raised money for it a few years ago uh, <laughs> to redo it in a night, very successful capital campaign. But I don't support them because of the CEO. I don't support them because of volunteers. I don't support them because they are fisc they're frugal with their money. Uh, their, their graph or their pie chart shows they only spend 6% on fundraising. Um accurate the, um the, I, the early yeah the, the pre-show comment was, it, yeah yeah that 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 comes through in the in the live thing I, it just bugs me when i'm i care about people getting food i care about people getting off the street that's one of the things that i'm passionate about and care about and i get something from an organization i support who does that i have to go look to hear about a story yeah or 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 even see a human uh, you, you've got to. I got to open it up to see a face and see a face. Yeah, and that maybe that's not all of them. Interesting. It's most of them. Yeah. And so the takeaway is, like in everything else, when you are sending an email for this week, writing a newsletter, sending an appeal, whatever it is, remember why your donors are on this list, why they have partnered with you or signed up to volunteer. It's not because your CEO looks a certain way or is funny or witty. It's because of what you're doing. Yeah. And in ever on every page, and especially on the cover, you have to lead with why a donor cares about you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, and I know even less about them than than you do, but uh, my guess is that is a uh, well. Actually, I hope it is a completely uh, internally uh, uh, put together. Yeah, the, the organization my, does. It. My understanding yeah. is they are in house. It looks very org centric organizational centric it looks very much about us i mean oh the year we've had well what about the year fine. <laughs> the donor has had or oh well, what about the year the people we help have had yeah the, pe the people who were struggling with homelessness might have had quite a year as well anyway so but we had to figure out how to log into <laughs> zoom okay <laughs> not everybody knew what zoom was a year and a half ago so woe is us <laughs> they don't actually mention that do they uh, they mentioned that they had to, they were something about figuring out Zoom. Oh, man. But okay. they put it in quotes. Well, as if Zoom is like a made up word. Zoom yeah. meetings. Oops. I okay. love quotation marks. Okay. Inverted commas. Well, so just remember why a donor cares yeah. about you. We, we even talked that. about that a, a few episodes mm -hmm. back saying, you know, you, you can't just assume the donor has that understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even if they did last month, say you did a great <laughs> job with that last month. You can't just, okay, well, we've got a positive balance in the donor's heart. <laughs> We're going to debit against that with a CEO-centric article. Let's just phone this one like, in again. <laughs> you always have to be making deposits if you oh, want well. them to make a deposit to you. Um, 
So your turn. I'm I'm done ranting. I could keep going. Podcast at one is he done? Yeah. No. <laughs> I got this like three days ago. And I was so mad. <laughs> even but, even I, I, but I was happy because I was like, hey, I don't have to think of anything. <laughs> I don't have to look at any, don't have to check a file. Okay. So let's change. We'll, we'll, we'll I'll, switch gears. I'll, 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 I'll definitely will switch gears. So, um, and, and I just needed it in the spirit of of candor uh, to say this. Uh, this is not a direct marketing fundraising thing, but I, f- I found it very interesting. So um, uh, Chris and I celebrated what we call Birthday Palooza this weekend. Um, uh, we're, we're running hard and so just got a little time off and, and went and found some sunshine and got offline. It, part of that process was that we weren't in any of our usual spaces and so we... We were in a place where um, uh, COVID restrictions allowed for, you know, restaurant stuff. But mm. we were wanting, we, we sat outside, uh, we did a variety of things. And, and part of that was we often had to wait for a table. And we were waiting for a, a table at, at bre- for a breakfast uh, a couple of days ago. And um, I, I, people talk on their cell phones out loud. Have you noticed that? And and you, sometimes <laughs> even on speaker on speakerphone. Yeah, and I, I'm not going to get it because that's one of those things that old guys sometimes will rant about. I'm not, and sometimes it's old guys doing it. So I'm just going to say that. At any rate, there was a there was a, a a guy across the the sidewalk from me, and his cell phone rings, and he looks at it, and then he, uh, I assume it was his wife. He kind of does the whole I got to take this, you know, and so. He stepped, but he doesn't step far enough away that I can't hear him talking. Okay. And so he is, um, and again, I'm told, I'm only getting one side. He didn't have sure. I, yeah. I wanted to ask him, do you mind Just putting put that on speaker? speaker? I can't go ahead. Or three-way me in. <laughs> yeah. so, so clearly he was getting a call from someone. I was inferring an attorney or a business manager or something like that. And they were talking about a land deal of mm. some kind, some kind of, a, and, and it sounded like a development, like real estate development. And uh, this call was about a roadblock that had just come up. I'm again, I'm inferring uh, the the day before the night at the last night, the previous night, and and I heard enough to realize that the, the discussion was over a zoning thing. Something mm. had changed at a meeting. Or I, I don't know. They didn't and pay it, off the right person yeah, on the zoning was, committee. Something was happening, and they were having to. And I heard, so so now I'm going to transit. I tell you all that to, to say, this into the conversation I heard um, was uh, the man mentioned a sum of money that was one of those that would have, was a clincher just for me to hear. And he said, yeah, that's how much this deal, this part of this deal will cost mm-hmm. us. And well, and so, you know, there was some conversation. And then he says, he says this, he says, well, don't forget. We're patient, and I because I, I actually was taking notes because I just do. Let's that. just say, well, when you see when you hear or see something interesting, you have no yeah. idea what's going to come well, out. Well, and I and I've learned a lot of lessons, not eavesdropping, but those kind of public things. And so he he said, and I wasn't really eavesdropping. He was talking yeah. loudly. I had nowhere to go. No, he didn't wait, even he's get, got so anyway. He has no yeah. expectation. So he of says, privacy. he says, we're patient. We remind ourselves that we can take our time. We can sell this year. We can sell next year. We can sh- sell the year after. And I wrote that down. I put it in, in, in Evernote under leadership things to say there are very few times that you can't be patient. Certainly with deadlines and certainly with, with you know, seasonality kinds of things. Um, certainly with uh, the life and well-being of people. Those, those are automatically urgent. But a lot of times we get consumed with trying to get it done just because we can't be patient. Mm-hmm. It needs to get done. Yeah. And so one of the things that, that I appreciate is this guy who I had no idea who he is or who I he had no idea who I am. And if you're listening, sorry, you should have you know stepped further away from me. Um, he, he had the right attitude. And, and what a great thing for a leader. And again, he was talking to a subordinate or someone who was working for him. That, that mm-hmm. was not in doubt. And, and what a nice thing for someone who's bringing what was bad and sounded like expensive news. And then he said to be told, it's okay. Hmm. We can be patient. We're going we're gonna to play this out. This is powerful. So my scene of the wild is look for opportunities as a leader 
to, e to exert patience and follow up on the things that have to be done quickly. But often, if you can be patient, that gives time for things to work out differently. Mm -hmm. You can't beat someone playing the long game. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I got. I like it. So next is something you should be doing if you're not already. Uh, you should try this. This is practical advice, a practical practical practice that you can put into practice as soon as the episode's over. And this isn't a long tail. This doesn't take a, long, a lot of time to put in place. You can start tomorrow, right now. And mine is answer the question. I've talked about this before, but again, you get, you see things. Answer the question why a donor should give to this versus the one you sent last week or mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And in a few months, we're going to come into Giving Tuesday, but right now we're in a month where apparently there's a local giving day. Mm -hmm. And I know there are other giving days at other parts of the year kind of across the country. Yeah. And yeah. organizations will say, hey, this is our state's giving or this region giving day, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, blah, 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 blah. Moolah for Milwaukee yep. or something like that. And that's a great way for someone to have a raised baseline of awareness because that organization running the giving day is pushing messages out. You have every organization in the area also pushing a message out so that everybody's kind of compounding interest upon each other. But if your message is, hey, it's this giving day, send us your gift right here, or even worse, on Wednesday, I think it was, um, the one here started, and they've started early giving. So I got a lot of emails saying, hey, early giving is open for this giving day. <laughs> and? <laughs> Operators are like, standing by. Why do I care? <laughs> like, one, why do I care about giving to this day in general? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in these cases, uh, you should always have a different message of a... It really works out that this giving day comes now because this is a special or this is a specific struggle or situation the people we help or the sloths we help are tackling right now. It's seasonal, so this matches up really well. I hope you'll give because we need your help around mm -hmm. this time. Or you know, we have a match. Maybe you get a donor who has heard about this thing. You say, hey, if you're going to give a gift, will you give us a match? And then we can go to people in this heightened awareness time with a match. It's going to compound. It's going to be great. That That is a great reason to come to people and, and say, hey, on this day, you need to give us your money. If you don't have any, if you literally don't have any other thing, if there's nothing new, there's nothing different, do one of two things. One, don't send anything out. Or two, oh. Oh. or two, just send out a very easy to write, quick, hey, it's this day. A lot of people are thinking about being charitable. A lot of people are thinking of looking outward and not inward. I hope you will help us do what we do. I hope when you do that, you will think of us because your partnership is important. We can't do this without you. Thank you so much and be mm -hmm. done. And that's it. Don't do one social post along with it. Don't spend a ton of time doing videos and you're, graphic posts. You're trying to, to, to maximize the, the return on that effort, mm -hmm. right? Because... If you don't have anything special, yeah. odds are you're not going to make as much from donors because it's not going to connect. So if you spent less time, literally, whatever you get back, it's a better or a and, and usually there's something, even something artificial like um, yeah, all the gifts today, the the credit card fees are, are covered by the, the ongoing mm -hmm. organization. Or everything today has a potential to be matched mm -hmm. up to... Two billion dollars or whatever. I got an email from an organization that again I like, but it was eight paragraphs, and the third, the fourth one was this still on that. Mm -hmm. that this is okay. about the Giving Day. Mm -hmm. The fourth paragraph was the only thing about like what your money will do. The rest of it was just unpacking all sorts of crap, and it's like this is stupid. How do you really feel about this? I get so mad, <laughs> and. <laughs> Okay, why do you I, but get mad? So, what, is, why, what does that make you mad? Because it's so frustrating because I, you're coming to me with a fake reason right. for my money. It's Come to artificial. I, I would have no problem saying, hey, this is a day you've heard about it. 
people are gonna be thinking about looking outward. People are gonna think about being charitable. I hope you'll help us. And if you do think that way, I hope you'll think of us because we can't do this without you. Thank yeah. you so much for your time yeah. and get out. I was talking to a client uh, late last week who was asking about Giving Tuesday and sort of like the question we got on the mailbag podcast oh, yeah. saying, Hey, <laughs> did you so just we'll, say, would you here? I, the, I said, well, I said, listen, but it I hadn't been posted yet. I so. said, okay, so well, you know, what are you thinking? And she's why well, you know, I don't really know. And I said, so I gave her those options. If you have something different, mm-hmm. a match specific, then you know, do a campaign. If not write an email or look at what you did last year and just redo it. And she took that in an interesting way I hadn't thought about uh, or hadn't thought about recently of giving attention and making it an ask for a part of their program that isn't usually big enough to oh, make yeah. Yeah. Um, it's sort of to like, headline. It's sort of like the infant sloth mm-hmm. uh, angle of yeah. the sloth sanctuary. And okay. so she's writing around something that never really gets attention. Oh, that's great. And is even gonna, I had even advised her to say, you probably don't hear much about this. Here's why. Well, that's perfect. And this is why we're doing that. So oh, that, I like that a lot. That's a great idea. So either sit down and really think about why a donor should give to one of these giving days or whatever it is you're sending out, because um, that works for appeals and newsletters. Why does this one matter versus the one I sent last month? Mm-hmm. It just, just res- it's sort of like respecting a donor's time. Yeah. If a donor's going to open it, you should have put the thought into helping them see why this gift mattered and it, versus that, last. And month. by open it, that could be an envelope, mm-hmm. that can be an email, that can be anything. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. All right, that, that's mine. I'm going to stop yeah. ranting. <laughs> well, you're kind of fun when you rant. That's kind of cool. Okay, so my try this is um, stop telling your donors it's important. Okay. <laughs> Yep. So there's an old saw, uh, an adage in, in the writing world about it's show, don't tell, right? Mm-hmm. And that means don't use exposition to reveal what's happening. Describe what's happening. And so I, I wrote an example. So the telling is, and this is why I'm not a fiction writer. Okay, I'm just going to say that in advance. I heard the footsteps creeping behind me and it made the whole situation scarier. That's tell. Mm-hmm. Show is the crunching of the gravel behind me was in time with the acceleration of my hammering heart. That's a little show. Mm -hmm. So same with your donors. If you have to say this is important, you haven't done a good job of describing why. So they're not idiots. (laughs) Well, it. And the problem is, and, and, and I'm guilty of this, uh, everyone who writes is guilty of it, is writing important is easy. Writing the it, word important huh? is easy. And don't put quotation marks around it. Because, That's oh even my worse. Gosh, that even makes it clear that you're not sure it's important. So This might be important. <laughs> so, it's important that yeah, you give to this because my job's on the line. Use italics. Okay. Um, so <laughs> don't tell me it's important. Show them why. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of like you can say... If this continues, future generations will live with the burden of poverty. Mm-hmm. It, uh, unless something changes, this problem will continue to destroy innocent lives at the rate of you know, five a day. Or so that kind of show. If you do that kind of show, then then if you just, it's much like what I say about you know don't don't think donors. After you've done that work, if you just really want to use that I word, go ahead and throw it in there and say. You can see how important mm-hmm. this is, but don't leave it to that. Another word to just avoid, and I'm just going to say it, is don't say urgent without describing why. But that's a mm-hmm. that's another that's another one. Right. We may want to re rename a couple of these these uh, uh, these these segments as the rant of the day because you had a good rant. Yeah, there. that was pretty good. I'm not always going to have one, yeah. but I'm when we when I when I do, we should okay go back in time. Okay, yeah, let let your donors do the math. Yeah, yeah. they'll figure it out. Don't just show up. Yeah. All right. So after all of those rants, this isn't going to be as ranting, I hope but not. getting into email, uh, we talked about regular direct mail newsletters before we know, and you probably know that email works. It is a great method to both validate and engage in the non-fundraising, non-income lane, as well as the income oh fundraising lane. Oh my goodness, yeah. And because of the cost effectiveness of sending an email, it can really do that better than direct mail can. Mm-hmm. Because you, 
you've got to find some cheap paper or a great deal on stamps <laughs> and have an awesome appeal coming behind it to make a, a soft touch direct mail work over the, over the long game or have somebody who really is invested in the long game. And it's like, look, it's going to, it'll work in two years and it will, and it will, but it's hard to do. That's a yeah. lot of courage. Yeah. Email is so much more cost effective. Yeah. And, but that doesn't mean that it's automatic. It, Alas. In the early days, you really could just send out an email and it, it really was like, you know, tossing a hook in the water and you're just getting nibbles and you just had to reel them in. People are responding. It's great. If your hook was out there, you were getting money. If you had a way to take money over the internet, it was coming in yeah. about as much as your dial up or 56 K connection could handle, <laughs> but not now. So here are a few reasons this is by no means the full list of why your email didn't work, but things to consider. Mm -hmm. Think if, if you sent an e appeal, which is our, coded term for any email you're sending that is asking for money and you didn't get the income you were expecting mm -hmm. and not by a little bit, but way off. Yeah. Then here's where I would start. So the first one is, did it get sent by you or from a, a from a person or from a robot? Ooh. Ooh. Now, technically they're all sent by robots because of servers, but <laughs> was it sent from an email address that is do not reply. Yeah, do at, not reply info at your organization name. And then in the uh, the first name, last name of the email address, is that a person's name, an organization name? Ideally, that would be first name, last name of a person, the leader of the organization, and then an email address that could be their email address. And the reason I say could be is you want people to reply and make this a two-way street. Exactly. And we advise clients, don't use the real one. <laughs> don't, whatever well, your, real, don't use your no, main one. That's right? what I mean. So yeah. whatever yeah. your email logic is um, internally, if it's first initial, last name, do first name, last initial. Mm -hmm. And it still looks like an email that mm -hmm. someone's monitoring and goes to the leader, mm -hmm. but isn't going to get pushed down the from the board saying, Hey, you ought to review the budget. And it's, Oh, I didn't, I didn't get your budget email chairman. I was, I was busy think? engaging with all the emails that we're getting back. So uh, make it obvious that a person sent this email. I, I think that's so good because if you do email, right, donors will just click reply. And to your point about it, not only clogs up a, the the uh, an email address. Uh, it, it if if most leaders are sorta busy, mm -hmm. and you don't want those replies getting in that stacked up category you're talking about. And so it again, it's not like uh, in some of the client situations I know how they do that. Is it there's an admin who mm -hmm. is who is who is receiving those emails mm -hmm. on behalf of the leader. And then, and then triaging them to where they need to go and, and, and not responding on behalf of the leader necessarily, although I, have, mm -hmm. I know of situations that that happens, but helping the leader give responses that are appropriate. Mm -hmm. so, it's, yeah. it's huge. And that first name, last name, and the from are the only parts of your email. It's like the outer envelope of direct mail that we can guarantee someone is going to see. And it, even to mark it red or delete it, they have to see who it's from. And you've done some testing to show how that, that, that a name works mm -hmm. better than anything else, mm -hmm. right? I, we've done testing. I've seen other people do testing. I've, the numbers change because the variables are different, but no one's testing. I've never seen a published study where it was even or an info at did better. Yeah. So a name preferably an identifiable name mm -hmm. and preferably your leader's name, but not their primary email address. Correct. Yeah. Just use their home email. Address. Yeah. Use, their, use their at their Yahoo yeah, their at Gmail. AOL. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I, I tried to go chronologically, but I, I may have, I may have gotten them out of order, but after they see it's from a person, I'm like, yeah. Oh, so-and-so emailed me. That's great. What, does the design look like? Did you design too much? 
Mm. Not enough in your email by design, photos, colors, both background colors, font colors. When I open it up, does it look like you? And if it's got my picture on, the that's right. If it's, if it's got a big picture of your leader as the watermark in the background, <laughs> then it does look like you and that's going to work. There's no good design it like this because yeah. just like in direct mail, your donors, your email file, everybody's different. And we have clients even in our um, portfolio of clients that are on very different ends of the design spectrum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and some that it's only a logo at the top and then very little formatting in the email. It's like an email. I mean, it is very much like somebody sat and banged out the email on a keyboard and it works really well. And we have lots of other clients who have very high design with, you know, nice, beautiful banners with embedded call to action buttons, you know, videos embedded in emails and colors, and they work really well. And the way to find where you fall on that spectrum is by testing. And I would start by testing an arted banner with an image uh, where it's got an image and then some amount of text versus your logo and everything else below that is exactly the same. Try that. See what works. Watch open rates, click throughs. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked about it a few episodes ago. When, when you're evaluating anything about this to test, to figure out where you fall, open rate, click through rate are important, but they're not the overall. Uh, there's really no th one metric you should look at. You should look at how many people opened it. You should look at the people who opened it, who clicked on it. But the goal of this is also to make money. And so you also have to look at how much money that was responsible for, which gets into very complicated things about how you do that. But also pay attention to that because if your open rate is low, but the 20 people who opened it were the right donors to open it. Which happened. That's an awesome email. Exactly. So pay attention to lots of things. It would it be fair to say that uh, you evaluate based on whatever the goal of that particular piece was? Because... Mm -hmm. We will, with clients, send um, uh, con just the, their relationship building and connector emails. And so th there's usually, usually the donor finds the uh, donate link somewhere, mm -hmm. but the primary goal is to just connect and mm -hmm. make, a, make an impression that way. And so that'd be a very different metric than a, here's, we're on deadline, here, this is important that you mm -hmm. give today because of these, I said important. Anyway, um, you just showed them what I just, well, yeah, yeah, there you go. it's different. And, uh, you really have to look at all sorts of things to figure out what was successful because the email, if the high op if it had a high open rate, but not a lot of people gave then, okay, it didn't produce the income, but what can we learn from that subject line? Cause that got a lot of people to open mm -hmm. and how can we apply that in the future? Uh, so with so many moving parts in an email that, each one of those can inform you. You can really learn something from every email that can get applied. Yeah. So another reason your email could have failed, um, trying to get back on task is length. Mm -hmm. Was it too long or too short or Goldilocks? And again, it, it does it. I was going to say it doesn't matter. It does matter. Um, your clients are going to, or your, your donors going to be specific and different. Everybody is, is made differently. There's no, I don't believe, and we've seen in testing that a long email can do well. Mm -hmm. A short email can do well. Mm -hmm. You will see studies. I've seen studies that say, Hey, write more longer emails work. Absolutely. But we also send a lot of emails that are very short and raise a lot of money. Yeah. The point is include scaffolding and make your case. Mm -hmm. If you would like to make this a short email, basically just write out the scaffolding and include some words around it to make them conversational and be done. If you'd like to do a longer email, really flesh out those tell scaffolding points story. and tell a lot of a story. But the shortest email in the world without scaffolding and making a case isn't going to work. The longest email in the world without doing that isn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say you shouldn't be doing one or the other. 
you should change it up. Donors shouldn't get accustomed to all your emails being short. They shouldn't be accustomed to all your emails being long and they should just vary time to time. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about length. But did you make a good enough case? Did you make a clear ask? Because if you'd like to get money, did you ask for any? Yeah. And, and can I go ahead and yeah, say Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Is that bad? I know where you're going. <laughs> and give me multiple places, even in a short email. Hmm? Give me a link. Give me a button. Hmm? Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, the reason you want both, not just because you want multiple at-bats, but some people will have their email clients, email systems set to not display buttons. And then your button disappears. Yeah. So if you only did one button, you're asking for money, but there's really no way for them to do it. And no one's going to go search. Yeah. So did you, and is it clear? So your hyperlink, is it buried in sentence three of a long paragraph or is it out on its own, easy to find? And is it a cool color that the designer thought would look really important? Or is it kind of a standard link blue or something like that that says, click me, just because mm -hmm. that's what goes on? Yep. The, the only time I am a big fan of non-standard hyperlink colors, which we all know that blue, right? Hyperlink blue. You see that hyperlink blue. I've seen it where it's been formatted not as a hyperlink because someone was using branding oh. and I've been convinced it's a hyperlink. And so you're clicking on a and blue it work. And, and it's and blue text, yeah. but it doesn't work. But it looked really, it, it looked just cool. like it got my attention. The only time I'm a fan of those not being blue is Christmas time because yeah. you have very standard red and green as your colors and Christmas signals that can get a donor's attention, especially since you didn't do it the other 11 months of the year. So very nice. Otherwise make it a clear ask both in what you're saying and asking for mm -hmm. and visually how you find it. Very nice. Ah, here's the one I got out of order. Okay. Um, should have been number two, but it's subject line in your preheader text. Oh. So after you see that it's not from a robot or maybe it was from a robot, what was the robot or the person saying? Right. And so, and so describe, be sure, be sure we're all talking about the same thing. So the subject line is the, it displays differently in everybody's email system, but it's the first thing, the main thing somebody sees. It could be, we need help at Christmas. Yeah. And sometimes it's a, it actually says subject. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it says re colon. Yep. It, it, it kind of depends and you have to write it knowing it's going to look different on a lot of people's systems, but the subject line is the only thing in addition to who it's from that you know they're going to see. Okay. So, uh, and, and we have a diverse audience. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we're learning about that and we're grateful for that. So, send us your age when you send us anything. <laughs> so, one of the things that, that I've observed is that um, even, even let's say, people who who as my mother would used to would, would have said is they ought to know better. Right. And, and they still, that part is not taken into account the same way a teaser is taken into mm -hmm. account on an on a, uh, outer envelope or a headline or a, a whatever. Um, and, and, and they, they just sort of just phone that in mm -hmm. that we talked about headlines, spend, you should spend 80% of your time because 80% of people, uh, or that's 80% of what they read. And, Subject line is the same way. Yeah. Even if I'm swiping to delete it, I have to see who it was from and what you said. Yeah. yeah. And now preheader. Preheader. Uh, and actually, preheader doesn't always get displayed depending on your mobile size or your email platform. You may not always see it, but it is kind of supplemental text. Um, if you do see it in your inbox, it's right below the subject line. Usually the subject is bolded. And the preheader is in a smaller font and unbolded. Yeah, it kind of floats in there above, a, like a header or a. Yeah, but even if, even in your preheader, but right? even in your inbox preview, oh, it's oh, there oh, as oh, well. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. But then when you open an email, then everybody will see it, and it's right at the top of your email, uh, even above your banner image if you have one, your logo, and 
You can use that a lot of ways. You can use that as a summary. Um, regardless of what your subject line said, you can say, hey, we need your help at Christmas, save the sloths, or you can, if you're doing an intriguing headline mm-hmm. or a subject line, like, oh, that sloth never thought they had a chance. And then the pre could be until you stepped in or until they found the sanctuary. So it can function as a, uh, a an A and a B, mm-hmm. like, but, or a sub or subheader, mm-hmm. uh, a subhead. Yeah, it can, it, a subhead is a, is a probably the best correlation. You just can't depend on it showing the way you want it to. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things about email that I think people who, who work internally on one organization don't get the benefit of as many uh, different organizations as, as you see and as many different clients' uh, email methods sending out, all the various ways these things can happen. Hmm. And and so... Because on, on paper, yeah, I, you may have to have big bifocals or glasses, but I know how the piece of paper is going to look to every single person. And with email, there's no way. Campaign Monitor, Mailchimp, um, Clavio, all the big ones will let you simulate a lot of design looks, but there's no way to get all of them. Yeah, because across platform, in across, addition to the platforms, you can have the various settings, and yeah, and then software versions, and it just it, it doesn't work. But everyone is going to see a subject line. Everyone is going to see the from information Mm -hmm. so you got to focus there Um, but if your subject line and pre-header if your email didn't do well look at look at those to see okay this one could have been intriguing it didn't say we need your help Uh, it wasn't about the offer or about the ask it was about the story or something intriguing mystery were the ones before that that we've sent also like that or Were those very offer-based, we need your help for this much, you can do this much kind of subject line pre-headers. And look and see if maybe you've done too much of that thing, or maybe you don't need to break that pattern. And so you may find that your donors really respond to subject lines a certain type. Mystery subject lines really work, offer subject lines really work. Okay, then you're the exception to the rule of breaking patterns. Then don't break that pattern if it never works when you do. But look look around at that to see if that could have been a place to tweak. Nice. And then lastly, this is sort of a cop-out because it unpacks a lot. We'll have to do a separate episode. But look at where the donor goes when they click on one of those asks that were clear. I'm so glad you said that. Does the donation page the giving page wherever they click when it says hey give money i found the link yep i click on it and And it was a link and it took me somewhere does that page support (laughs) what you were saying or is it the the same one you use on everything (laughs) is it is it generic (laughs) or does it work there's all sorts of things that could be wrong with that page so yeah Landing page messiness is a, yeah, that's a thing. So you could have had a very well written, not from a robot email, awesome subject line, whatever it is that resonates with your donors, gotten them in. It was perfectly designed at the right level, written at the right level, made the uh, made the great case. Uh, Look at these asks. I can't ignore the ask. I'm gonna give you my money, and I try to give you my money, and it's weird. And I don't know what's going on, and it involves friction. And any time you put friction oh, yeah. into the giving experience, out they go. This is one time, and I just love I'm getting you say this. This is one time direct mail has it easier yeah. than email. Is there, There's almost no occasions a donor thinks some stranger sent them your, your direct mail appeal or your newsletter. Mm-hmm. Like, who, who but is it, this? But in the email world, even those of us, or I, I, no. whoever, is, is um, less concerned about the, the various ways that, that the digital space works. If you click on a link and you land on a page that doesn't look like what you were expecting, or it hasn't been iframed in, and so you're, you're on to, you know, 
the, 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 the small. The, the give it, the, well, or the or the 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 uh, landing page uh, tool you're using has to use its own oh, yeah, URL. You, they're not. Yeah, if, yeah. If I'm not even on your website, yeah, that's ugly. A lot of people aren't going to get. And, and you have a weird. Well, actually. you have a weird spectrum of old people are stereotypically untrusting of any technology. Hmm. Or they trust often them. when they should be, <laughs> but they're not. It's like, well, this is weird. I'm not going to give it my money. It's probably trying to steal from me. And then you have younger people, millennials, Gen D, whatever, who are very native and know. Well, that's dumb. You could easily be taking. Yeah. Going off. Yeah. Going Either. off. It, you're your a, website you're, is you're, a problem. You're a bad dirt road no matter what yep. you do. So those are seven, eight reasons why your email could have failed. Uh, we're probably going to unpack a bunch of those in future episodes. If there's one you'd like us to start with, podcast at one SD. Which is actually read by a person. Yeah, that's read by a person for sure. And if we were to send an email from that, I'd change the first name, last name to be one of ours. Yeah. But we're not going to email you from that. No. If you email us and we have a question, we turn it around and we'll flip it to one of our actual email addresses and come back to you that way. It'll probably be him. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. Anyway, so that's why your email didn't fail or didn't work. It's why it failed. You used double negatives and the donor didn't know what you you wanted them to do. This is really important. This is really (laughs) important. (laughs) Okay. But now we're going to segue into something that should be on your radar. Gotcha which this is things that you and I would send back and forth and weren't always on work topic, didn't have to be read instantly, but should be on one of our radars because it's interesting and will help you think different. Yeah. Yeah. Differently. So I'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, previous reference about having taken some time off when I'm on mm-hmm. a plane, I always go through once I, once I can't read anymore or whatever, I go through my Evernote, which is where I keep all the stuff I'm trying to hang on to, and I sort and you know delete stuff. And I ran across something that I've had a while that uh, I remember saving it, and it it's it's a it's a, a clip from an, an interview with Jeff Bezos, the Mr. Amazon, and it, I'm just gonna. He says, I very frequently get, frequently get the question, "What's going to change in the next ten years?" And that's a very interesting question. He says, I almost never get the question. What's not going to change in the next 10 years? Hmm. And he says, I submit to you that the second question is actually more important of the two. You can build a business strategy or your nonprofit strategy around the things that are stable in time. In our retail business, we know customers want low prices, and I know that's going to be true 10 years from now. They want fast delivery. They want vast selection. It is impossible to imagine a future 10 years from now where a customer comes up and says, Jeff, I love Amazon. I just wish the prices were higher. Or I love Amazon. I just wish you deliver slower. It never that's, happened. Yeah, that's never yeah. happened. So he says, so we know the energy we put into these things today will still be paying dividends for our, for our customers 10 years from now. When you have something that you know is true, even over the long term, you can afford to put a lot of energy into it. And so I'd submit to you that in, in, in the nonprofit world, there are some things that are... Um, that same sort of baseline will be true in a decade. And if, if you're a leader, it's worth you knowing that. And the kind of things that, that you, you think about that are going to be true. If, you, if, you're, if you're a people-helping organization, uh, ministry or something like that, it will remain true that donors want to know about the lives of the people that's being changed. Yeah. They will want to know what their donation is doing. They will want validation that that life was changed. And this is, so those are the things you don't take my list because I don't know your organization, but, but, but there know, are some, some principles. That is going to be static. Yeah. Think about the things that will be true in a decade and then spend most of your time on that. That keeps you away from the shiny object syndrome. That mm-hmm. keeps you away from from running down the trail of something that's not important and that you don't know is going to last a long time, and it, it'll maximize your effort. That's smart because it's impossible to always predict what is going to change. Yeah. And if you're wrong, not only are you wrong, <laughs> but you ignored the other <laughs> the, the other, other important thing. Things, and right? so yeah. yeah, hunt. Just stay stay home and hunt. I like that. Yeah. So mine is a guy on Twitter. 
I don't know how to say his last name. Um, it's Alex, capital L, lowercase l, U, two lowercase l's. Maybe Yule. Wow. I'm not sure. Yeah. But he is um, focused on showing you how to build an audience on Twitter. Mm. And one of the things he says you should do, and then you realize he is literally doing it. In is, front of you. Is right. try and fail in public. Don't tell somebody, here's how I built this. Say, I'm going to build this. Build and do live. And let people see it work or fail. And then Ooh. Ooh. they've bought into your journey. Mm -hmm. you know, they've, they've come along with you. They bought into it. They're interested. And then they, they also know there are things you're not tweeting or saying or emailing that you have learned. And they really want to know after you've built this thing that they're interested in. That's really good. And he, he also talks about how to um, get followers hmm. and not pay for bots, but... Yeah. How to get followers that are relevant to you, hmm? how to steal other people's followers, which Ste he calls stealing, but it, it's not as if they have to choose. So but you're, you're just attracting them, right? Yeah. You're using someone else's list of followers to make them also follow you. Hmm. And then he had, you know, he has lots of ways of, okay, if here are 50 things you ought to tweet in the month and hmm. it's prompts hmm. and it's, here's how I would use Twitter for an hour a day. And here's how I'd split up those 60 minutes. It's really effective. Twitter can be a place that it can be really difficult for some people to see how it has value. I, I think Twitter is very binary. Someone either is a Twitter person or they aren't. Yeah. And yeah. there's not a lot of, well, I'm kind, I'm, I kind I'm of like of, Twitter. I'm kind of good. I, I either love Twitter or hate Twitter. And it can be really difficult for people to see how that has any kind of business value or nonprofit fundraising, mm -hmm. any kind of business relationship mm -hmm. value, even if you are a Twitter person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I, I would look at Alex again, capital L lower capital L lowercase L U two lowercase L's on Twitter and just follow him. He has tons of ideas and he's showing how to build an audience live and in front of you and stay topical and engaging. I kept waiting for you to say, and that's what we're doing on this very podcast is we're risking. I mean, we, but we're not doing it on Twitter. No, no, no. no. But, but we are, it's we idea. are building in front of you because, yeah. you, know, you know, if you've listened or you scroll, you realize we haven't always been on video. We haven't always had these mics and yeah. we've iterated. And we haven't always been, I was going to say we haven't always been good, but that that implies we think we've been good so far. Yeah, I was wondering how you're going to get getting, out of that. It's getting better. We, I feel like we get better each week. Oh, no question. Well, so, there was one that was bad. There was a couple, but it's, we're not just one. You email us which one you think it is, and we'll see if we agree. <laughs> email podcast at Onenicity. I don't want to see that one. But he, it's effective. Yeah. I, lo it, I love that. And I, I like the application of don't be afraid to fail. Because mm -hmm. so often that just gets said. And I got to tell you, that's one of those meaningless blah, blah things that it sounds so great or looks so great in PowerPoint or in seminar. But on Tuesday morning, I am not looking to go into the Tuesday with an opportunity to fail. Yeah. It's hard. I like that. Yeah. Good job. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was episode 25. Can rent a car. And this is not your father's fundraising podcast. Next week, episode 26. We're going to talk about how having a dog in your office will triple your fundraising results. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. That is so true. 24 have been a joke, but the 25th one is real. <laughs> that's a long, it's a long game to get the payoff on the one that's really real. We can afford to be patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a long game. There we go. I'm Ryan Thomas. And I'm Steve Thomas. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Tune back in next week for another fresh episode of Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast.